I'm a stubborn well, Avon. This is Brad Reed, your real life trader, here reminding you to be good. And by good, I mean get out of debt and achieve your financial dreams. Uh, speaking of dreams, I've got the most awesome co host, sidekick, keep me out of trouble person ever, Angie Barbosa, out in Sacramento, California. What's going on, Angie? So we got. Oh, having a great Eastern day. Eastern time here. zone. Well, you're, you're having a great day? Cutting out on me. Yep, I'm having a great out. day. Okay, well, I guess I'm recording, so hopefully uh, I'm not cutting out on the recording. Oh, hopefully I am. Uh, who knows? Maybe I see some things that are wrong. <laughs> um, in the first two hours, we talked about a perfect gap and go that a bunch of people just completely crushed and demolished and destroyed this morning. We discussed uh, what is fun to do at Disney World. We also discussed what movie I should go see next week for following my trading plan. We talked about divergence. We looked at beer stocks. Um, we looked at Intel, which looks just gorgeous. And we talked about divergence. It was pretty boring, actually. <laughs> no, we had an action-packed first couple of hours. Um, Best Buy, perfect gap and go. And I'm going to call this a juicy perfect gap and go. So first of all, it's a gap and go because we have a bullish candle up here and it gaps down. Don't need any other information between the bullish candle gap down. That's a gap and go. Now, I really like the location and I think a lot of other people did because the stock has been very bullish for a long time. And uh, the sentiment is very, very bullish. Ooh, actually, here's the picture that I published this morning. So um, a lot of bullish traders, a lot of bullish excitement. It had looked at it come into some resistance and it was hitting that resistance on a big green bullish candle with big bullish volume. If we were in this trade, we likely would have had our stop maybe below that candle, maybe below these EMAs, maybe below the wick of this candle, which is also below the 50. So there's lots of logical places where you would have put your stop and then it gap below any possible stop placement. Even if you had had your stops over here at the bottom of these swings, when it opened, all of those stop orders got triggered, causing a massive sell-off. And so what ends up happening is all those orders are selling and it drives the price down. Um, now, so that's a gap and go. Uh, the location is, and all of this bullish sentiment and these potential stop orders getting triggered is why I like to say it's a good quality gap and go or juicy gap and go. Now the reason it's a perfect gap and go is because uh, we had a bullish candle on the, uh, the last candle was bullish on the daily, on the hourly, and on some of these charts I'm going to have to scroll a lot. There's the last candle on the hourly. On the 15 minute, it was a bullish candle, last candle on the 15 minute, and on a five minute. Now this one's actually a perfect doji, meaning it opened and closed at the same price, but um, that's kind of indeterminate. But because it had such an awesome location, many people traded it like a perfect gap and go. So the strategy for trading a perfect gap and go is to, uh, when it's bearish, so it's gapping down, is to put your stop at the two minute high, put your entry at the two minute low, and then enjoy the ride. Now, the only is if in the first two minutes you get some really wild swings, then you can wait for some sort of retest. But we did not see that here. So a two-minute low would be somewhere around $34.99. Let's see. I placed my order at $34.99, but I actually got triggered at $35. Um, I placed my stop up here at 35.37. Uh, some other people placed it at 35.35. Oh, and uh, Dan Walsh, studly man, uh, pointed out that this is also a, uh, it looks like a great gap and go on a weekly chart. So uh, kudos, uh, kudos to Dan Walsh. Um, Prasad was certainly helping this trade today. So thank you, thank you, thank you to my real life trading family uh, for helping me. And <clears throat> congratulations to all of you guys that just completely destroyed this one. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is find a 2R target. So if my entry is at 
My stop is at 35.37. That's a difference of 38 cents. 38 cents is 1R, so 2R is 76 cents. So that means my target is going to be down here at um, 34.23, which was right there. And if you did this trade, you were in, you hit your target in about four minutes. Uh, when I was doing this, I actually didn't get my target order in in time. It was moving so fast. Came down here, rolled up. Um, a lot of folks got out somewhere in this area. Uh, and then as it started to roll up, everyone began pulling their stops down. And most people got trailed out uh, in the low 34s. So a lot of people made um, over 2R on this. I think I saw someone made 4R. Oh, or Kuhn, uh, or Kuhn was crushing craft today. Uh, a lot of successful trades today. So awesome. Cool. All right. Um, some other trades that we wanted to look at today was what Intel. Intel is a trade that I am in love with. I'm in love with the trade. What is it? She bop and she rolling. I'm in love. Okay. Anyways, um, so here are all of the lines that you see we that we drew earlier. And so I'm going to delete some of these. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Go, go, go. Oh, someone showed me a trick today. Remove drawing tools. Ah, ha, ha. you guys are amazing. Thank you for that. Um, I see this little boppity boppity up and down action. Um, that's a technical term. If you go to reallifetrading.com in the videos, you will not see it there. Uh, but it, it's doing um, a little downward action. And when I first see this, kind of like a down channel, um, a distribution phase I switch over here to the weekly and that becomes a very beautiful flag pattern so I for that reason I am bullish on Intel uh, the 10 it's coming the tens getting closer the 20 is coming in and we see wicks getting closer to the 20 because of that I'm bullish um, if you if we come back here to the daily and I'm gonna add a little bit more time to the chart we see a run up from about 23 up here to 33, maybe 34. That's about $10. Then we got a correction of, oh, I did not want to do that. Then we got a little correction here. Yeah, shoot. Come on, Brad, you can do it. I know I can. Uh, we got this little correction which is almost 50% of that. Uh, and for you guys that are trained in Stokes, excuse me, Fibonacci, you're going to recognize that we got a nice, healthy Fibonacci retracement. And I think this thing could go for another 10 or 11, meaning that when it breaks out of here, we got room to go. So uh, if I were to place an entry on this, I would have... <clears throat> I haven't decided if I'm going to put my entry above that previous high. Um, in fact, I think I am. Close out of that. I know some people may bring it down to, actually, you know what? I'm going to be like Newsom and I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put my stop right here below the 50, maybe. It would also depend on what that looks like when it breaks out. And then my target is going to be somewhere up here around 41. But that's a trade that I like. Uh, now, another thing that when we were looking at this, we were uh, went and we looked at some of these oscillators, the stochastic and the RSI. And we talked a lot about divergence this morning. And uh, we came up with an analogy that divergence is a lot like a car going up a hill running out of gas. And if you've ever been in one of those situations, you got your foot on the floor. I remember one time, it ended up being the fuel filter was clogged, but going up a hill, foot's on the floor, and the car's just slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And I talked about another time where I was pulling a boat up a hill, a big heavy boat up a hill with an underpowered truck, and it was going slower and slower, and I was downshifting. And I, uh, what I really needed was uh, uh, Marsha and Ralph's truck. Um, because that thing had pulled about five boats. At any rate, um, but, but yeah, so divergence means you're just kind of running out of steam. 
And the most recent case of divergence that we noticed was, uh, what color am I going to get? Orange, that's fine. Uh, we noticed this. The stochastics are making higher lows, but the stock is making lower lows. That is bullish divergence. So that's another reason why I'm bullish on Intel. If you notice that um, right here, when the stochastics were making higher lows, but the stock was making higher highs, that's a little bit of bearish divergence, which played out right in here. And, oh, there was another one, Angie. Oh, here's one. I mean, there's, there's just divergence everywhere. These highs got lower, but the stock was going up. And notice the bottom didn't really fall out, but it, it certainly did stop going up the hill. So here's a few cases of some divergence and kind of what they look like. And uh, that is why, oh, here's one. This is one. Someone got a frequent trader point for pointing out divergence today too. Angie, do you remember who that was? I don't want to say the wrong name. I think I know the name. Casey, was it? Casey, that's right, Catherine Zwick. Um, yeah, so here's some bullish divergence here. Uh, the lows are getting, um, shoot, that's not what I wanted to show. Yeah, the, the lows are getting higher here, and we had this movement right in there. So for all of this mess is why I am bullish on Intel. Now, uh, we placed some bull put or some credit spread yesterday, and let's go take a look at those. Yikes, I got a lot of stuff on here. But um, someone was talking about was Tesla one? Yeah, Tesla was one that um, Jeremy texted me about. So we had a bear call. No, yeah, bear call spread on Tesla expiring tomorrow at two hundred. And 205, something or other. And some of you guys are texting me that you're making 3, 4, 5% in two days. That's crazy. You guys rock. So, our trading plan for this is to let this expire worthless. Um, our line in the sands right here where I've, where I've said stop, but if we get a close on the hourly above 196.22, we're just simply going to buy it back. Um, We've had two days. Uh, we've got 45 minutes left in the market today. So uh, there's a great chance you're going to get one more day of a theta tick. And remember, when you own options or when you're selling options, every night that goes by uh, ticks off and decays the value of your option. This is why we like selling options with a very short amount of time because the theta tick is very significant in your favor. And when you're buying options, you want to buy with a long time so that uh, you have a lot of, uh, or that the theta is very minor and doesn't go against you too much. We did note that there is a little bit of a support line here, and that would be just so awesome if it's going to break that while we are watching it. Um, we've got a lot of things in our favor. We've got the 20 coming down. The 10 is there. Um, so there's a lot in our favor uh, to protect us from this. So. The new, if you get a close on the hourly above 196.22, just buy it back. Um, tomorrow, you might even be able to break even or squeak out a small profit on that. Questions, thoughts, opposing views on the Tesla idea? Okay, so I'm reading some of the chats over here. All right, Arkun is asking me about uh, Caterpillar. Let's just go switch over to there. And Angie, I'm going to go through some of these uh, spreads that we looked at yesterday. And then if you can give me some of those tickers that uh, you were right, we'll go through those and go through those really quickly. So uh, Caterpillar Orkun says, about cat going bullish sentiment. Um, could please explain to me why the sentiment changes because of earnings from bearish to bullish. Uh, earnings are very unpredictable. And earnings can change sentiment based on what the stock traders anticipate the earnings to be and then what those earnings actually are. So it can be really confusing because the stock can come out with really earnings and the stock go down. 
Um, back in my younger, dumber days, I actually made a down payment on a boat with a credit card and uh, was planning to sell some IBM stock the next day to pay off the credit card. And I was thinking how smart I was because I was getting frequent fuel points or something like that. And uh, the stock came out, had great earnings announcement, but the stock dropped 25%. So uh, I had a real hard lesson that even on good earnings, a stock can drop. So uh, we've got a proposal here of taking cat bearish with an entry of 87.81, which is up here, with a stop at 90.71 and a target of 81.13. Okay, so this must have been an older trade. Um, 87.81 is below the wick of that candle, so I can see it. The stop up here at 90.71. I think we could pretty safely move the stop down. Um, if I were in this trade now, I would move my stop to that level just above that candle. Um, and a target of 81. Um, yeah, I, I think it looks good. Awesome, Orkun. Best of luck with that. Keep us updated. Let us know how that goes. But uh, I think you're in good shape. Um, Neil says, so how about another bear call spread on Tesla expiring next week? Another bear call spread expiring next week. Um, you know what? I am going to wait and see what this thing does. If it continues bearish, then uh, I, I would be all over that, especially something in this gap above these key pivot points that would be amazing but right now it's got a little tiny bit of a, a bullish oomph and i would wait for that to play out uh neil's uh, tomorrow might be a, a great day to to look at this again for a weekly uh spread because if you place your credit spreads on friday you get saturday and sun of theta tick in your favor and you open it up on monday and you had some good stuff in your favor so if you like short-term spreads, Wednesday, Thursday, and especially Friday are great, great days to enter. All right. Um, next on the agenda, let's take a look at Netflix. What did that do? Netflix, we had a 335, 340 bear call spread, and that is continuing to run away from us. So just keep doing that as planned. Now you've got the 20 in your favor as uh, resistance. So I'm going to keep on going for the sake of time. Amazon, uh, looks like I was drawing on Amazon earlier. Amazon, we did a bull put spread, 282, 250. Oh, that's right. We were talking about this earlier. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, we had a bearish day today, but uh, 282, 250 is way down here. Our line in the sand is just below this second uh, support area, this this blue line here is our line in the sand if it closes there on an hourly. So if we switch over to an hourly, um, we've got lots of bouncing. Uh, it's kind of a, a bit like the reverse of Tesla. Uh, I can understand why you would want to pay attention to it because you do have a little bit of, of this going on, but um, this held, this held, we're 40 minutes away, 39 minutes away from another theta tick. Uh, you've got this blue line for support, so it would have to cross through there, go all the way down to here, um, you know, before you even consider closing it out. So I expect it to come down. Let's see, it's going up. It may go up, come down, go up, come down. I expect some of this action for the rest of the day and tomorrow. We may come down and do a little retest. But I think that's about as scary as, as you can expect on Amazon. Um, stick to the plan, and the plan is to uh, close it out. If you get a close on the hourly below 284.20, which is about where this is, but I think everyone should be just fine. But if you placed a weekly credit spread, you got to watch it because if, you, if it goes against you, it's going to hurt. Um, we also placed one on Google L. We looked at Google with no L. That just seemed, I guess after Christmas, you can consider trading Google with no L. <laughs> Get it? No L? 
Goog? Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> I did that drawing thing again. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I'm making jokes on purpose because, you know, well, yeah, we all want Newsom back. Um, what did we do? We did a 485 by 480 bull put spread. Bull put spread. Sorry, Pat. That was for the other Pat. <laughs> um, and yeah, everything looks bullish. It's uh, we got a bearish candle today, but or excuse me, this is on the hourly. Got a bearish candle on the hourly, but it looks like the 20 is holding. If we take a look at it on daily, eh, you know, not the most bullish thing, but I don't have any reason to think that that one is in jeopardy. And then we did one on FAS as well. Guys, how am I going on speed? Am I going too fast? Am I doing the right speed? 118, 120, bear call spread. Holy smokes, did anyone do the, the FAS spread? I'm wondering if it is worth zero money right now, meaning that you've already captured all of your money. Because this was just huge. What right. can one do with a frequent trader point? Well, ultimately, we're going to ha we have some awesome plans in store for frequent points, but uh, for right now, just keep racking them up, guys, because the prices are going to be fantastic. Yeah, there. Yeah, prizes. We will be giving away prizes. Okay. Um, Tommy Manet has FAS puts. Tommy, you are a beast. Um, so if I had put, how, how are you looking on those puts? When do they expire, Tommy? What's your target? What's your plan? Fill me in, fill me in. I'm definitely thinking you are trading in the right direction because we are making lower highs now. Up. Tommy Manet is making bank on FAS, which is a banking TF. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I the the it's just craziness. All of the great, wonderful. Oh my gosh, Tommy! The, Tommy, you just got below, below that. Tommy, the man. Yeah, you just got below that, and actually, I'm going to draw it down on the top of those wicks. It looks like you're going to close below that, and if you do, holy smokes! Tommy, you're going to fly us all out to see you. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, I think your next uh, support you got to look at is the bottom of this or the open of that green candle and the top of all these. But between here and there, I think you got smooth sailing. Uh, Tommy, are you typing in your target, buddy? Expiration next Friday, $75. But you got uh, Theta going against you. Um, you did get below the 100. You got that. This target right here. Hey, guys, we might look at this for buying the bounce. If the market if things go bullish, this may be a great buy the bounce location. You got the 200. You got the support area coming in. I'm kind of liking that. So, uh, Tommy, um, yeah, you know what to do. FAS. Awesome. Okay. Where are we at, Angie? Uh, Angie's got a big list of uh, tickers for me to look at. Yeah, someone requested Apple. Oh, that's right. We should look at Apple. And while the I'm chart's sorry, pulling I... up, go ahead. Yeah, I can't remember. Who. Oh. Can't good. remember who. I can't scroll back far enough. All right. Um, while, who wanted Apple? While I'm fixing my chart here. Wanted to remind uh, everyone that in the first two hours, we kind of talked about uh, the health of your eyeballs. And a lot of people run into eye problems because they look at a computer screen, computer screen or a book or sheet music or something that's the same distance away a long time over and over and over again. And uh, that can, uh, that means the muscles in your eyes are not constantly working out and stretching. When you're looking at things at different distances, your eyeballs are always, the muscles in your eyeballs are always working to uh, stretch your lens uh, so you can focus on those things. And when you look at the same object for a long period of time, 
the muscles in your eyes lose the ability to focus and to focus on objects. So if you do look at a computer screen for a long time or look at books for a long time during the day, um, be sure you take 10 minutes out of every hour to look at things that are very, very long distances away. OK, Apple. Um, is this Newsome setup, or is this something that I did a very long time ago? I think it's something I did a long time ago. Uh, what is the current sentiment of Apple that you guys are doing? I think uh, Jeremy was talking about some protective puts. He had a line in the sand. Um, anybody remember? I wonder if I can go over here and pull up Newsom's chart. Chart. Johnny G, Jeremy Alexander Newsom. Do you have Apple on here? Okay, well, I think if I click on this one, it's going to think that I'm him. And it's going to try and pull up Tesla. Then I'm going to say, pull up Apple. And I really hope that I don't just override his Tesla chart. Protective puts. Thank you, TradingView. So if you are in on Apple, uh, these protective puts are making you some money. And, uh, you know, it's it's angled downwards. Are there, are there any questions? Uh, when, when I was trained on downward trend lines, it was always you need three points before you draw a trend line. And I got three, maybe four. So it's certainly in a downward trend. Um, it is making lower lows. Uh, you know, this 103.65 may be a target if you're in bearish. We've been talking a lot about divergence, so let's come over here and take a look and see what we see. And um, I do not see any, yeah, I do. There's a little bullish divergence here on RSI. Basically, what I'm going to interpret that to mean is that uh, this blue line here is going to be a good stopping point. So if you are in bearish, on Apple, uh, I think that would be a great place to to exit for a profit. If you are holding on to shares and you still have them, uh, I would place my stop below this this blue line. If you're in bullish, if you're in bullish, and you've been holding through all of this, and you want to keep holding, um, I would put there. I think Jeremy drew that at a saving grace line. Um, and yeah, that's what I do. Questions, thoughts, opposing views on Apple. Could be a descending triangle on Apple. Um, yes, I 100% agree with uh, Catherine Zwick. It's crazy how good Casey is. <laughs> but yeah, she's saying, um, hey, Brad, we got a little something, something going on here. Kind of like that. I'd agree. Is that a downward wedge? Yeah, I don't think it's a downward wedge. Angie, is that a downward wedge? Okay, that might be wedge-ish. And if it is, and closes above here, that would be a, bu a, a bullish, like a bull eating salmon out of a salmon stream with a picture of a bear behind it. I don't know. I got carried away. Um, so we've got a little bit of bullish divergence. We've got a strong support that we're approaching. Um, what are the long terms doing? Bam. X marks the spot when the 200 comes up here. I don't know. Um, either when we come down to here, I think the 200 is going to catch up out there. Or if we break out of this, uh, there's yeah, I think we go back can we hit the target? Questions to posing view on Apple. Some people say they are bull, bearish on Apple. Um, looking at support, uh, got one person at 103.65, another person 103.30. Yeah, I'll write in through here. Um, if you're bearish, I usually targets a little bit on the high side because I think a lot of people are going to be closing out at the top of that daily bopper. Um, daily bopper meaning that little white candle there, which makes this evening star reversal. 
Um, certainly some people are going to be dumping it at the top of this um, big uh, black crow candle, um, that guy at the top of that one. And that's where you're getting the 103.30. Yeah, so right in here, um, I'd be looking to exit any bearish positions. Cool. Angie, what's up next? Well, I accidentally skipped Cheryl Mullen's request to look at C. Oh, that's right. C. And we got 30 minutes wow. left. Wow. Citigroup. All right. So what did Jeremy say? Jeremy said something with a pink line. Jeremy says, actually, you guys wrote you. If we gap below 47.66, which we did not, target is 46-ish on the daily. If we gap above 49.80, uh, we didn't. Okay, so if the gap, oh, I'm looking at the wrong candle. Sorry. There we go. Uh, 47.60 is there. So we did. No, I'm sorry. The open is there. So it opened at 48.04 and continued bearish. Uh, what what are we looking for? Yeah, I, <laughs> I see another mic. <laughs> yeah, and I'm wondering if his note pertained to not today's candle but yesterday's. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, we had it, it gapped down. So you know that's kind of what it did. Um, If you were day trading this, you know, there's a great entry right there. Um, it certainly stopped, and you could have made some money on that. Um, it sounds like our questions were answered on C. So unless – that's bearish, Angie. That's bearish. Okay, so now I'm wondering, could we take this all the way down to 46.13 and look for a bounce around there? The answer is no, because we don't have a good reward risk ratio. Um, I don't already have my broker platform pulled up, but I'm wondering if we could do a one-day bear call spread right in there. What do you guys think? Should I pull that up? I'm going to pull it up. Anyone looking at a... Um, Oh, what is it? Oh, they just changed everything. I wonder if that's going to work anymore. Okay, so this is my virtual account. And what were we looking at? We were looking at C, and we were wanting to get above anything higher than 49 on a bear call spread. I think it's moved too much, Angie, for there to be any credit there for one day. Yeah, probably. 49 on a bear call spread. Yeah, there's no money. Nothing. All right. Well, we tried. All right. What else we got? Cheryl, were there any specific questions? I see you took it earlier. 47.31. That looks like a big trade. Oh, Cheryl, 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 got in at low of the day, stop at 441. Did you get in here? Oh, Cheryl. Cheryl, didn't I give you my phone number earlier? I told you to call me when you're going to do some beast mode thing like that. That's awesome. Very nice, Cheryl. Awesome. Angie, what do we got coming up next? We've I'm showing... Priceline. Priceline. In 13 minutes, um, give me a heads up that we got 10 minutes left, and we'll go through. We'll take a look at what the market did today. Okay. Perfect. It's not PRCL. It's PCLN. There we go. I got that Eminem song stuck in my head. I'm, like, getting all pumped up, like I'm going to start rapping for you guys. Um which would be scary. So price line uh, looks bearish to me. Uh, we got a little sideways sidestep pattern going on. 
Oh, the trigger's way up there. All right, if you are in Priceline bearish, the question is, where do you put your stop? Um, I have something on my chart that says stop should at least go there to lock in a profit. Um, if you're getting close to your target, you might tighten that stop down. What was the question that we were looking at on Priceline? And while you guys are typing in, uh, I know the exponentials are going to be above. So let's go see if, we, if we're getting any bullish divergence. And we are not. I don't see anything. I mean, this one is a little... Ah. Okay, so for this little tiny smidge that might be considered bullish divergence, I would call it this swing high there that played out. We have now made lower low on the Stokes and a lower low on the chart. So I would say that that is not bullish divergence, not divergence. Um, yeah, everything looks good for that to continue on down. Uh, Yoav says I'm on a five-minute chart. Uh, thank you, Yoav. That does certainly make a difference. <laughs> I feel kind of like an idiot, but at least it's being recorded for all to enjoy. Yoav, you are the man. Thank you. All right, so this is why you guys wanted to look at this one today. So uh, price line looks like it's going to cl close below our trigger. Uh, then the question becomes again, where do you put your stop? This thing has been dropping really, really fast. Um, I would be tempted to put my stop right above this swing point because it's offered so much uh, resistance in the past. I think I would do that because we do have uh, a little bit coming in right in here that is uh, some old support, which might be new resistance. And uh, yeah, that seems like that would be, um, so we've got a decent amount of uh, support between us and the stop. The one thing I don't like is I wish that exponential were down there. I, I'd like to have at least one exponential between me and the stop. Um, let's see, I would turn on the long terms, but they're up there. If you're not in on Priceline, but you like the way this is moving, with a close this drastic below this pivot point, I would imagine it would come up and test this in the next day or two. And so you might be able to squeeze in another entry there. And then if it breaks south, if it goes down from our trigger point, then you can bring your stop down and just have some kind of mad, crazy, uh, mad, crazy tight re uh, risk right in there. Question about MACD divergence. Let's go check it out. MACD divergence on price line. I don't see any potential divergence because. The stock is making lower lows, which is a very bearish thing. The MACD is making lower lows. It's making lower highs. Um, oh, I see what you're seeing, Tina. You're awesome, Tina. Tina says, hey, there's, well, no. I, well, okay, maybe Tina was just asking me to, because that, it made a higher low here and a higher low there. Uh, yeah, that, so yeah, that would not be divergence. So um, Tina, thank you for reminding me to check it out, but I do not see anything. Um, I did not get to place my um, order in on this one, but if you are, if you got embarrassed today, I would place my stop. I place my stop about if you're waiting for the retest and the retest holds, then you can move your stop down to there. Questions, thoughts, opposing views. If it bounces here, we'd have a little bullish divergence. 
if it bounces here. Bullish divergence, you would want higher lows on the, the stochastics, but you would want uh, you would higher lows on the stokes, but lower lows on the stock. So um, because this line has already gotten below that line, I don't think I would call that bullish divergence. Maybe if the RSI turns up quickly, you might get it. Um, but uh, Intel had much more and stronger bullish divergence, I think, than price line. Angie, what do we got next? We've got CSX for Patricia Sieber Bradley. I love to say her name. Patricia, I just love your last name. I mean, it's so musical. I mean, gosh, Bradley, that's just an awesome, awesome name. I mean, my parents thought so back in 1974. Am I being too narcissistic, Angie? Okay, I'll just keep going more. Um, <laughs> keep going. This looks like we had uh, a bearish day trade set up on it. Um, so I'm going to take this off because this is, clearly looks like a day trade to me. Um, what's your question, Patricia Sieber Bradley? Would love a gap down below 33. This must have been a while back for a retest gap. Because we're going up, up, had a bullish candle, it touched and tested that resistance. Uh, we might be rolling over. Jeremy, I'm sorry, buddy, but I'm going to delete your snippet. Um, it's making lower lows. It's making lower highs. We broke through a, a support. We tested it. We tested it twice. These EMAs are coming down. Man, I'm just all kind. Of, I'm waiting for a rollover and to take that thing bearish. Am I missing something? What do you think, Angie? Simples. Oh, we broke below the hundred, and now we've crossed and above the hundred. So uh, you guys, we may want to be watching this one tomorrow or next Monday because if this rolls over, I'm looking at the two uh, the 200 for a target. We might be able to get a nice uh, a nice. Uh, yeah, I agree. Oh, 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 this looks nice because I see that wick, that wick, that wick, and of course line. Uh, when we do place this trade, go bearish on this. We're going to put our stop right there above those wicks and above this oh, line, crazy. and. That's so sweet. Maybe an entry. <laughs> and hopefully we can get an entry right uh, close below that 100. And uh, take that down here to the 200. Let's see. So the 200 is going to continue coming up. So I'm going to put it about there-ish and call that a 2 to 1, uh, 2 and a half to 1. Ooh, you guys were helping me out. Can I do this bearish drafted short position? Let's just do the math. Actually, let's not do the math. Let's make the computer do the math. So Zane and some of you other awesome, awesome folks for showing me this. And oh, it's right on top of it. So this would be a reward to risk ratio of 2.6, which was exactly what I was going to guess. But first, we got to get a reversal. And once we see the reversal, then we got to find our entry. But I would love it if we get a, a bearish reversal like a, a, a is it a new black crow or maybe even an evening star reversal that comes below the 100 and then wally kazam just crush that crushage is that the question on uh csx a couple of my neighbors actually work for csx can brad analyze bby as a swing yeah a couple of people have said that so let's go check BBY. This is the one that we day traded and demolished it. Making that money is what we did. And let's just go back to here. Remove all the drawings and go to a daily chart. Swing trade. This is a, that looks like the one minute. Okay. Wow, how far back did this thing go? Okay, 
Daily chart um, for a swing trade. Usually when you have a candle way out in the middle of no man's land like that, we do kind of like a bracket trade up there and there. But wow, that is a really big range. Uh, if you guys see a swing trade, go ahead and type it in. I'm going to keep analyzing and looking at this. You got something going on there. Top of, ooh, top of that candle and top of that candle. Um, and then the opening of that green candle there. Well, you guys can go down even more before the end of today. Jonathan Higgins, oh, I like what you said, maybe for a swing trade. Um, I would like to see this thing sideways a little bit. The problem is if we do an entry up here to trade it back up, then um, our stop would have to be way down here, and there's no way we can get a good reward risk ratio in there. Uh, the long terms, I think it's between them. Yeah, it's going to be between them. The 200 is going to come up to this line pretty soon, so that might be a good place to buy the bounce if we bullish or um, close out our bearish position if we had gone bearish. Uh, man, guys, I'm so sorry, but I think I'm going to have to wait on this one. Um, we could look at the oscillators, but oscillators are just going to be crazy. Uh, they're going to be looking kind of nuts because of this here, or, or they will by the end of today. Um, here is, is that bearish divergence? That's bearish divergence-ish. These highs are pretty flat, so that would not be convincing. That would be a whole lot more like bearish divergence. So that could explain what this gap down was today, uh, at least by sentiment. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, man. I cannot force a swing trade in here. So uh, I would like to say, let's see this go sideways uh, some more. Um, let's go look at the uh, stock market. Tickers, Orkun's got a question about how can he benefit from Group Me. Um, Orkun, a bunch of people are just posting trades on there all day. Um, I don't have a lot of time left, so uh, if you would email me, Brad at reallifetrading.com, or email Jeremy, Jeremy, uh, J E R R E M Y at reallifetrading.com, will help you. And Jeremy's uh, going to be the guy that kind of regulates how that works. Uh, let's go take a look at the market indices before. We go, you know what? I started late, so I can go late today. Um, Jeremy says, if we take out the high of the 14th, where's the 14th? Here. Potentially weekly bull put spread at 199 and lower. Okay, so, um, yeah. Up below get a bear call spread at 201 or higher. And we got something that's kind of indeterminate. Um, uh, those are sounds when I'm, I'm not in pain, I'm not dying, I'm just trying to find a trade quickly. Um, we saw some bearish divergence on this a while ago. And my question is, has it played out yet? So we saw this, and until we make a new swing low, I would not say it has played out. We're certainly going sideways. I like the fact that we have a lower low here. That's good news for this divergence being over. What I would really like is for this to roll over here or this to roll over there because then we would have some bullish divergence. I would call that, oh my gosh, Angie, can you tell TradingView to behave? Can you tell it to read my mind and just, I don't even have to, I have to think of it. Have you guys seen uh, the movie Ender's Game? Uh, he, the, the guy plays a video game and he's just thinking it. And his character on the video game is doing what he said. Because video games are way too uh, 
exercise in intensive right now already. So we got to make them even less. All you got to do is just sit there. Um, if that's if this happens and it has not happened yet, it has not happened yet. Please don't get me wrong. This bullish divergence has not happened yet. But if we were to get this picture, then I would feel very, very comfortable about taking this bullish off the bounce. However, if I didn't say it, I'm going to say it now. That has not happened yet. And so at this point, I am still bearish on these indices. Now, um, again, divergence doesn't mean it's going to go to zero. It just means the, that uh, me driving my truck up a hill, pulling a trailer, the truck's slowing down even though I got my foot on the gas. So, um, And that was for the bullish move. So it's rolling down the hill. No telling how it's going to go down just yet. So uh, I'm going to use that strategy I love on SPY called wait. Um, the DIA gives us a little bit different picture because we made a rather significantly higher low here, whereas on SPY it was a little bit more flat. So I see us entering this type of pattern, which would be actually kind of fun. But until we break below that line, and even if we did break below that line, back here we've got so many sources of support. I would have a hard time taking this thing bearish. But a quick bear call spread, maybe if we find one next Wednesday, might be fun. And then the, the simples are coming in too. So, um, I, man, I wish I had something better for you guys, but I'm just kind of indeterminate. If we get below the 100, which, of course, the pink line that I drew mimics the 100. If we get below the 100, that would certainly be bearish, and you might be looking at a short-term bear call spread maybe up in this little um, gap-type place area. Um, I don't know. I'm forcing trades, and I don't like doing that. So again, on DIA, I'm going to do that strategy called wait. If you guys see, are seeing something I missed, type it in. And um, Angie, of course, if you see something that I missed, you holler out. Uh, this one looks kind of more interesting because if we continue bearish, then uh, that would be, uh, we'd be getting below these, both of those SMAs. We do have some nice support here at 113 so that might make for a really quick day trade to go from here to here that would be fun actually um, if we can get below 11424 which is the 200 on the daily uh, let's take a look for any kind of divergence or any kind of indication and we got nothing so the highs here are about the same the lows here are about the same um, this is bearish there, but we're also getting that bearish move here, so that bearish divergence could play it out. So I'm uh, not seeing anything that I didn't already know. Um, so if I were trading the IWM, I would be looking for a close below that 114.22, which was that long-term moving average. And I would make a very, very quick trade down to that, um, down to the top of this Fibonacci line, which is based on where this last big reversal was. Some action here, some action here, some action here. That would be my trade on the IWM. And what's left? QQQ? Uh, looks like I'm going to have about three or four minutes left. If you guys have anything I have not yet. Uh, mentioned, blur it out. So here are the cues. Um, trigger end of day. If we go bearish here, yeah, we got below the 100. Looks like we're going to get very, very close to this trigger. If you're in on this, uh, Angie, where would you put your stop? Up here? This would be the safest place to not get stopped out, but the problem is you need a very big swing That's for your. Sure is far away. Two arm. 
You know what? I would bring my stop down to there. If we get a close below this line, if you get in, because I would have the 100 in my favor, I would have this long pivot point in my favor. You're actually going to have another one. When I say in your favor, I mean acting as resistance between you and your stop. So if you do get in on this, which I'm not sure it's going to trigger. we got another two or three minutes. Uh, then we got to check that out. Um, oh, I just thought about some. I can't believe I almost forgot it. Um, okay, so more sources of support. You got the top of those wicks all through here. You're going to have this action. You're going to have this line. You're going to have the 100, and you're going to have this Fibonacci. So I would feel safe having my stop here. For those that can't see it, that's at 101.71. But um, just pick an area above those wicks. And then your 2R target, I'm liking this even more. Uh, we could have a target pretty close to 2R right on the 200. Yeah, I like that. Let's check to see, just in case if there was any bullish divergence, I would bail in a heartbeat. I don't know if that's bullish, but it sure as heck is not bearish. If this were me, I would pass. Sorry for the silence, guys. Let's check me. MACD, please say something convincing. Thank you for nothing. <laughs> so the MACD looks bearish. The... Um, what was that? The RSI looks bearish. The stochastics looks like there might be a little bit of bullish divergence. But you know what? Uh, da, da, da. If we get this close today, this may come down. And this bullish divergence here could be played out by this right here. Okay, so um, I do not think we have convincing bullish divergence. So I feel... A lot more comfortable with that bearish trade. Sorry, guys, for going wishy-washy back and forth, but um, I think this, if if this is bullish divergence, I think it's been played out, and um, yeah, I think that's the best trade of all the indices. Now, something very, very important that I cannot believe I have not talked about yet um, is the very first in the history of my life is an open contest. We had a closed contest, but we never had an open contest. Did anyone get 46.21 as the open price for LEN? Anybody get 46.21? Uh, Patricia Sieber, awesome lesson, says QQQ did not hit the bearish trigger, which means we might be... Uh, um, just really set up for awesomeness um, tomorrow. Oh, I would love for QQQ to bounce up and bounce back down one more time. Um, did anybody get a close at LEN at 46.21? If you did, email us. This was the, uh, sorry, not a close, an open. If you get an open, and I, we said yesterday, uh, according to Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Finance says 46.21. I don't see anyone typing in, which is, ah, Dale Watts said 46.31. Oh, dude. Dale, you the man. But it had to be to the penny. To the penny. So I guess not enough people got it. All right, guys. But Dale, you're awesome. I appreciate everyone joining us today. I appreciate everyone sharing your trades. I'm going to just say it. I made money today because of you guys. Uh, you guys were helping me with my trade. You guys called out the Best Buy earnings. Um, you guys made the trade. You showed me the trade. You helped me place the trade. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being part of the Real Life Trading Link. This is Brad Reed. I'm signing off and saying, get on logic, not on hope. Have a good night, everyone.